So now we're going to work with functions, and uh, it sometimes takes me a long time to get my motor running. Today's been one of those days where I feel like I've been running through mud, and it's been really frustrating for me. <laughs> I don't know if you ever have some of those days, but I'll reflect on this more at the end. Because I know some of you just want to get straight to the coding. So let's get straight to the coding, and let's learn about functions. And functions are all about being modular. Modular means I'm gonna take my code and break it up into small modular chunks, small chunks, little modules. Back in the day, when people wrote programs, they wrote one big page, one big page full of programs, and they had all these go-to statements where they jumped to different areas of their program so that when they wanted certain code to execute, go to this line, go to that line, go to this line. And that's actually how I started learning to program back in 1982, Learning Basic, and it was awful. It was spaghetti programming. I was in junior high and they called it spaghetti code because trying to find a line of logic going through your software was like following a strand of spaghetti in a bowl of spaghetti. It was really hard to figure out what does this program do? Because it'd be like all this go-to jumping around everywhere. So that was like just straight spaghetti code, writing things that just ran top to bottom. And then they started to break programming up. They started to create structure. They called it structure programming or object-oriented programming. And they started to break it up where they modularized the code into chunks. And you could have little chunks of code, which you could then call and run. And they were in separate files. And so that is kind of like the idea of creating modular software and writing modular code. You break it up into modules. And there's a couple of ways we break things up into modules, into little packages in Go. One is to use functions. So we could take our code and create little functions, which we call. And then we could also use packages. And packages allow us to store code, which is like for a similar purpose, into different little packages. Like if you look at the standard library, so if we just go to Golang, and we look at the different packages in the standard library, you can see it's all broken up into a common purpose. This is like part of me feeling like I was running through mud today, like at one point, even right now a little bit, my computer is just like going so slow on the web. It's like, what is happening? So here's like the crypto package. And inside there, we have different packages, MD5, you know, different SHA-256, SHA-512, and same, you know, so it's all broken up into packages. So it's organizing your code into little chunks and, uh, and grouping it together. So functions is a way we do that. And let's uh, get a new thing of code here and refresh this page. Not that one. Go here. There we go. And we'll see how long this takes to load. Part of running through mud. It's like, what is up with my internet? Thank you, finally. Cool. So I could create a function, and a function is going to have this, uh, this syntax, and it's going to start with func. And is that a keyword? So we'll go look at the language spec, and we will find out. Language spec, go language program, keywords, and we have the func keyword. So it starts with func, and then it'll have something called a receiver. Okay, And these are a lot like parameters, but it's going to attach it to a type attach it to a type, and we'll see how that works. And then we're gonna have an identifier, and then we're gonna have parameters, okay? And then we'll have returns, and you can have multiple ones, or a singular, and then you're gonna have code, all right? So your code might be represented like this, like that, be represented like that. So that's the syntax our functions will take. And, uh, and so here is a func foo, that takes in no arguments, it has no parameters, it returns nothing, and then it does something. Cool, so that's all it does. And then I could come up here and I could call foo. And to call it, I have to specify how many arguments I pass in. So when you define a function, it's called a parameter. When you call a function, what you pass in are called arguments. So know the difference between parameters and arguments. When you call it, you pass them in. I'm not passing in any arguments. I'm gonna format all this and run it. Maybe it'll just run. Hello from foo. Not sure why that printed out red, but that is all fine. There we go, hello from foo. I think it's just part of my computer running slow. So I'm gonna copy this code and put it over into our course outline. Know the, oh, let me put this in too. Know the difference 
between parameters and arguments. We define our func with parameters, if any. We call our func and pass in arguments, if any. Cool. So there is the first part of just, you know, creating a func. And now let's create another func. And so I'm just going to copy this. Oh, so you can see it. I'll just do it again. Func bar. And this one is going to take in a string. And, uh, and we'll print out something. Hello, S. And so that's going to print out. So now when we call bar, we're going to pass in an argument. So we're passing in a string. And format it and run it. Hello, James. Right, so this string got passed in to this function as an argument. This function is defined with a string as a parameter, pass in an argument, which is a string, and then that gets assigned to the variable s, and, uh, and s prints out the value of s right there. Everything in Go, everything in Go is pass by value. What you see is what you get. Wissy wiggy. Pass by copy, pass by reference, throw those terms away. <laughs> I don't care where you're coming from. Everything in Go is pass by value. I'm passing the value James in right here. That's it, passing in a string, pass by value. We're gonna stick with that phrase, which is the phrase we use in the Go programming language. We're gonna stick with that phrase as we learn more and go through this course, but everything is passed by value. So I pass that in and, uh, and that totally runs. So I'm gonna copy this code and put it over into our course outline. And there we go. And uh, I will put here, everything in Go is pass, pass by value. Cool. Nice, and uh, what else would I wanna do? And then I could return something if I wanted to return something. So foo bar and I don't know, woo. Okay, so I'm gonna call woo and I'll pass in money, penny. And I need to create funk woo. And we'll get rid of this now. So funk woo, it's gonna take in a string. And the scope of this S right here is to there. The scope of this S right here is to there. So don't be confused by an identifier here and an identifier here of the same name. If I wanted to be clear, I could change it, right? But that's why I changed it up here. So to be clear, I'll just do, well, that has bad historical connotations. I'll do uh, ST. And that maybe will help avoid any confusion. But those are different variables. And what I want to do here is I want to return. So I'm going to return, and I could do a fumped string print, and I could print hello from woo s t, right? So this is going to print to a string, string print. It's going to print all that, and then it's going to return that. So I need to return a string. So this returns a string, and then I'm going to assign that to there. And then I'm going to print line that right here. Format it and run it. Hello, Woo. From Woo, Money Penny. I got a little space there. Hello from Woo, Money Penny. So that is uh, illustrating how we do a return. And if I wanted to, I could have multiple returns. So I will show you that. Course outline, return. So this, this one up here was uh, basic func, and this one is takes an argument. That one took an argument, and now we're gonna do multiple. And uh, this one will be tang. I don't know if that's a bad word, Wu-Tang, define. <laughs> I've heard that, Wu-Tang, a rugby cheer. Uh, yeah, that's a bad word, okay. So I don't know where I heard that. Uh, we will call this uh, mouse. There we go. Uh, funk, <laughs> mouse. <laughs> uh, we'll take in, uh, sure, it'll take in, 
you know, I don't know, we'll call this uh, first name, last name, string. So you could do it like that. We've seen that. Or you could be a little bit more clear and you, you could do it like that. And then it will return, uh, it'll return a string and a bool. And uh, now we need to call that in. So we'll pass in uh, uh, Ian and we'll pass in Fleming. And that's going to return two variables. And so we'll just call this, uh, I don't know, x comma y colon equal. So it returns two variables. And it's returning a string and a bool. And then down here we could return, well, we could first have s or, yeah, we could use s again. I don't want to create confusion. So we'll, we'll just call this a colon equal. And we'll font print line, string print. Uh, and we'll do fn comma ln says hello cool there we go and we'll do b colon equal is false and then we can return a the string and b the false now when we call mouse, we get those. So let's use them. Format print line X. Format print line Y. Format and run. Ian Fleming says hello and false. For whatever reason, false. We're returning false. And uh, I would put a little space right here. There we go. Ian Fleming says hello, false. And I change this to true, just to be positive. Format and run. So that's the basic structure of a function. We have the func, and then some identifier, and then the parameters, and then the return, or the returns. If you have multiple returns, they have to be in parentheses, and then you just return to that, and you pass those up, and you can assign them in this short declaration operator the comma here and it signs those returns to them. And uh, that's how a function works. So we'll learn a little bit more about functions in the next couple of videos. Mm -hmm.